Wow, it's good to be here today. We appreciate each one, and and I thank God and praise Him. Then we testified down at church just for a few moments this morning about uh, these verses of Scripture. I want to read with you in the book of James, the first four verses, chapter 1, book of James, first four verses. And uh, uh, God began to speak to our heart about uh, about this message. And uh, when I read it, I read over it just like I always read, and and I just kind of just kept on going down through there, and and then I backed back up, and then God allowed me to see something that I had never saw before, and uh, I, I appreciate the goodness of God. I thank God for all that He's given. You found your place. Uh, read with me in the book of James, chapter one, verse one. The Bible says, "James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad." Greetings, my brethren, verse 2, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. Verse 3, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, uh, wanting nothing. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we come to you this morning. God, we're certainly thankful, Lord, for all that you're able to give. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you spoke to my heart, Lord, through these words. And God, I call upon you, Lord, right now, in the divine power of the Holy Spirit, God. Lord, let us, God, I pray just for a little while, Lord, preach on this thought, Lord, this morning. God, and we'll praise you for all that you do. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. I want to preach on this thought, the trying of your faith. Amen. Notice what it says there in uh, verse 3. It says, uh, knowing this, that the trying of your faith uh, worketh patience. Amen. Now, it doesn't say our faith as a collective. It says your faith. So God's speaking to us directly. Amen. This is coming straight to me. It came to me the other morning. I was sitting in there. And uh, as I began to read that, and, and when I looked at that, it says the trying of your faith and it's just like God was speaking out of heaven he said son I'm trying your faith right now I'm trying your faith right now amen and I looked back at God and I said oh God woe is me I said I have failed you so miserably uh, and, and, and I said it, it, I said forgive me God forgive my unbelief and uh, I sat in there and I, I shed tears for a while and I prayed and talked to God about that. And uh, uh, you say, well, have you, have you got it straight right now? I'm trying. I'm trying. And when we get into this message, you'll understand what I'm talking about uh, as, as we get into this. As God began to give this to me, uh, amen, this week, and I began to think about the trying, and I'm going to change that just a little bit, not trying to change the Word of God, but when God tries our faith, amen, uh, and He comes to you personally, and uh, the, and when God tries your faith, or my faith, or Chris's faith, or Amy's faith, whatever, it's, it's a personal thing. It's one of those things that uh, it's between you and God. Now, the Bible tells you and I to work out our own salvation in fear and trembling before God, Amen. And when he when he tells you to do that, uh, what he's doing, he's saying you've got a measuring stick, and that measuring stick is the power of the Holy Spirit of God, Amen. When God sent forth His Spirit into the world, uh, friend, He sent it down here to be a comforter. But not only is it a comforter, uh, it's it's uh, one that points to the Word of God, and He leads us in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Amen. As I thought about uh, uh, what uh, James is saying there. Now, this James, this is the brother of Jesus. Amen. Now, and, and I'll bring out a point here concerning that. James uh, probably uh, was one of those children. He was the half-brother of Jesus. And uh, he was Joseph was James's daddy, and Mary was his mother. Uh, and uh, uh, they... There's a good change that uh, Mary was a little bit more particular about Jesus 
than James or, or uh, his brother uh, or his sisters that they had. Now, Mary had several children. Uh, amen. After that, she bore our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and but I'm sure that she uh, she kind of worried a little bit more over Jesus, and maybe she did a little bit more for Jesus and everything. And some of them probably thought along the way, "Well, he's just a spoiled brat, you know, or something other like that." Uh, but see, Mary said uh, it was told to Mary uh, by several people uh, before that Jesus was born. Amen. The things that would happen in Jesus' life. Amen. And uh, she bore all of these things in her heart. The Bible says, I believe it's written down, that she pondered those things in her heart. Amen. She, in other words, she thought about that probably every day of her natural life. Uh, up until the point when Jesus hung on the cross at Calvary. And, and she saw her son hanging there uh, to fulfill that hour that he was coming to. Amen. Now, when Jesus and, uh, was at the marriage of Cana and his mother uh, came to Jesus over there and she said, uh, uh, told him, said, you know, they're running short of wine. And she said, you can do something about this if you will. Amen. And he said, woman, he didn't call her mother. He said, woman, uh, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. Amen. In other words, he was looking, Jesus was at that time, toward Calvary. Amen. He was looking at a battle that he was going to have to face. He was looking at a time that he was going to have uh, uh, to take the sins of the world uh, upon himself. So you got to remember, Jesus was not only man, but he was God. Amen. The Bible tells us in the book of John, verse 1, he says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Uh, amen. Down about verse 14, he said, And the Word became flesh, and we beheld the only begotten of the Father, full of grace uh, and of truth. Amen. Uh, and when we think about uh, who Jesus was, amen, he was the God-man. Uh, he, he, was, he was God that took upon himself the form of flesh, and they called his name Jesus uh, when he was born. Amen. And in the book of Isaiah, in chapter 7, it says over there, and the brother pre uh, uh, quoted from this this morning uh, in the service over there. It said, his name shall be called Emmanuel. Uh, amen. And then Matthew penned it down uh, in, the same, in, the, in the same way. He said, and his name was, was called Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Amen. So now this is the very uh, 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 God of heaven, a man that took upon himself uh, the form of a servant. They called his name Jesus, a man. Uh, and uh, uh, James, uh, up until the point of his resurrection, probably didn't believe all that he way he ought to believe, a man. But when he's seen his own brother come out victorious over death, hell, and the grave. It made a believer out of James. And at this time, James was probably the head of the church there in Jerusalem. Uh, amen. When this was being written. And one thing about the book of James, as you begin to read down through it and go through it, it is blunt. Uh, he's, uh, he, he, he doesn't uh, dance around the maypole trying to make a point. Amen. He just tells it like it is, and it is like he says. Amen. And I praise the Lord for that. And when I began to look at this, and I thought about uh, the trying of my faith, amen, the, uh, or your faith, as God began to show me the other morning. He, said, he told me and spoke to my heart and said, David, I'm trying your faith, amen. And, and as I began to study on it and begin to think about uh, these things that you and I have, first of all, we got to have faith before it can be tried, Amen. So I want to read to you back over in the book of uh, Ephesians, I mean, uh, book of Hebrews, chapter 11. Listen to what it said. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed uh, by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by the which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of this gift, and by it uh, being dead, yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated uh, that he should not see death, 
uh, and was not found because he, uh, because God had translated him, uh, uh, him before uh, his translation. Uh, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Now, verse 6, listen to what he says in verse 6. Uh, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Who? That's talking about God. Uh, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. So uh, in order to, to, to have your faith tried by God, friend, uh, you got to first have faith. Amen. In order to have faith, you have to believe in the word. Amen. You can find in the book of Romans over there that it talks about, in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, the source of our faith. The source of our faith today, uh, friend, is the word of God. Uh, he, he said over there in, in Romans 10, 17, uh, that faith uh, is... Uh, 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 faith is the of the word of God. We must hear and believe. Amen. So uh, the we get our faith through hearing. We get our faith through belief. Amen. Through hearing the word of God, and when you hear the word of God, you uh, you'll automatically understand whether you're lost or undone without a savior, or you're saved by the grace of God. Amen. Uh, the word of God preached to a lost person, uh, amen, seems to him as foolishness, amen? But when the word of God has uh, done its work and that individual receives faith through the word of God and he understands that he is lost and he receives Jesus Christ as his Savior, then God gives him faith, amen? And so our faith today in Christ Jesus this morning, amen, our faith in Christ Jesus this morning uh, there's going to be times that you're going to be uh, put to the test. Amen. God's going to try your faith. Now, the Bible plainly says, uh, amen, that God tempteth no man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away with his own lust. Amen. And the things that we see around us. And, uh, uh, but God's not, he's not bringing temptations to you. And he's not tempting you with things of the world. He's not tempting you with different things, but God tries our faith in such a way, friend, that we have to understand that. And when I begin to look at that on the trying of our faith, amen, one of the first things that jumped off of the page at me, amen, was afflictions. That word affliction, amen. Let me read over here in chapter uh, 4, uh, amen. Listen to what it says in verse 13. If any among you afflicted what does that say afflicted if any among you afflicted let him pray uh, if any murray uh, let him sing psalms if any sick among you uh, let him call on the elders of the church and let them pray over them uh, uh, anointing uh, him uh, with oil in the name of the lord jesus christ amen so afflictions is one of the first things amen uh, that, that we are caught up with, amen, or that comes in our lives that tries our faith, amen. And uh, if I asked you this, this morning, how many here has been sick within the last three months? Uh, just about everybody here, raise your hand. And uh, let me ask you something. How, did, how good did you suffer with it? Think about that. I mean, how, uh, I mean when you're suffering, my wife tells me that I'm a worse sufferer than they are. If I've got a cold or flu, I, I not only make myself miserable, but I make everybody around me miserable uh, because I complain. And, I, you know, and I, I, you know, we're just up and down. You know, we don't, we, you know, we're just, oh, Lordy. But now that's common to humanity. Amen. That's common to humanity. First of all, when you look at this body, you think, well, you're healthy and everything like that right there. I'm going through an affliction right now. Uh, amen. I had some surgery a few weeks ago, and there's some things that's going on in my body right now uh, that uh, I have tried my best by the help of God and by my uh, own will. And, and, and I just had to look at God the other, uh, other morning when I, I said, Oh, Lord, how little my faith is. How little my faith is. Amen. I've asked you, God. To, to take care of this. I've asked you, God, to touch me. I've asked God to help me and everything. 
and then I've what if and I've done all kinds of different things and I've complained, uh, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, and I've, I've, you know, think to myself, you know, you know, everything that under the shining sun that could, could possibly think about and everything has ran through my mind. And all it's done was cause confusion in my mind and in my heart. When God's already known this before the foundation of the world, he already knew uh, that I would be, uh, uh, that he would be trying my faith right now uh, through the affliction that's in my own body right now. Amen. As I'm preaching this message to you, God knows. Amen. God not only knows, amen, uh, uh, but he's helping me to understand, uh, uh, David, I'm taking care of it. Whatever the outcome is, my grace is sufficient for you. Now let's go back to a, one of the writers of the Word of God, uh, the Apostle Paul. Am I am? Think about this. The Apostle Paul had an affliction. And, and in that affliction, Paul called it a thorn in the flesh. That's what Paul called it. And, and he went to God and, and he said, God, uh, and, and I'm sure, and I'm going to paraphrase just for a minute. Uh, I, I'm sure that when Paul was talking to God, he said, God, I could probably do a whole lot better job if I didn't have this bothering me all the live long time. God, uh, you know, I, I don't, uh, you know, I just don't know how I'm going to live like this. And I don't know how that I can serve you like this. Uh, you know, I've got a thorn in my flesh and, and, and Paul went three times to God. He said, God, I need this removed and everything. And I've made the statement before. I believe Paul, with all of his heart, when he met Jesus on the road to Damascus, he completely changed him into the individual that we, had, that we know of that's written about in the Word of God. He completely changed who he was. And I believe with all of my heart I, that Paul wanted to go not only 100%, but I believe Paul wanted to step on a little beyond that, that 100% mark. He wanted to do like 110%. But he had a problem. And that problem he had uh, was a, a, a thorn in his flesh. And when, he, when, when the rubber met the road and God spoke to Paul, he said, Paul, he said, I've given you a messenger from Satan to buffet you. To buffet you. And he said, my grace is sufficient for you, Paul. And when Paul got a hold of that, I don't think he ever thought about it again. He just accepted it as God's will, whatever it was. I've heard people say, well, it was he had a speech fed and fed him uh, that he was short or he had a bum knee or, or, or something other like that right there. The word of God said, Paul, I've given you a messenger from Satan to buffet you. He said, but my grace is sufficient for you. And then Paul went ahead and penned in another place that God will not, will not uh, bring something on you, friend, more than what you can bear. Amen. But in every temptation that comes in your life, God will make you a way of an escape. Amen. Uh, so when, when we look at these things and we think about the afflictions and, and everything there, and I thought about that, my, my, God, how many times down through my life have you tried my faith and everything? And I probably failed the, I probably failed the trial. But then again, how many times that God has tried my faith and then uh, when I get through the battle or get through the sickness, and everything. I had COVID a little over a year ago in January and February, and I was sick for uh, a good while. And wish to my die, there was times I sat up in my bed and I'd hyperventilate just to get enough air into my lungs to where that I could I, uh, that uh, that I could breathe. Uh, and I wound up on oxygen, and uh, you know, I, it, it was a rough time. And my wife would testify to you right now. I grumbled and griped and complained uh, just about the whole time. And I was sick for several weeks. Amen. But I come through it. And it took a long time for me to get my strength back. But little by little, little by little, everything kept coming back. 
And, and I look back at it now and I think, God, it's amazing how you worked. God, it's amazing how that you did what you did for me. Amen. And I thank him from the deep in the hole of my heart that God was able to, uh, to touch my body and get me back to the position uh, to where that I could, uh, and everything. And if you'll go back in my messages, friend, you can find that a couple of years ago. I, there was times that I stood and tried my best to preach. And I couldn't get hardly enough air in to, uh, to talk above a whisper. Amen. But God was blessing me the whole way. Amen. Now, let's go back up to verse 2 in our scripture verse. And look what it says. My brother, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. That's different temptations. Count it all joy. Now, I thought about that. How can you be happy and be sick and miserable at the same time? How can you do that? And then I thought about this. God began to speak to my heart. He said, you're a winner either way, David. Yes, you're a winner either way. I love you from a deep hole of my heart, and I'm with you. The Bible says, I'm going to go with you all the way, even unto the end. Amen. And that's what we're to have joy in. Amen. Joy in knowing that, that we've got a place beyond this veil of tears. Joy in, in knowing that there. It's not what the body's going through. Amen. Uh, and it's not what the mind goes through at times. Uh, and everything. But if we'll, we'll focus, Brother uh, Chris brought it out this morning. If we'll focus... And, and, uh, you know, and, and like a laser. Amen. I don't have a laser. Uh, but they, you can buy a scope that's got a laser on it to go on a rifle or a pistol or whatever, you know, or a BB gun, as far as that goes. And, and it shoots a little dot out there on whatever you're going to try to shoot at. And uh, uh, if your gun is shooting right, that's just exactly where whatever you're shooting is going to hit uh, and everything. So now think about this. If we can focus our mind like a laser on God, amen, and knowing that he's loved us before the foundation of this world, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth him should not perish but have everlasting life. Then when we're walking through temptations down here in this world, and we're walking through hard times and afflictions, and different things like that right there, then we can, uh, we can have joy down in our heart knowing Knowing that if it if it if it flies apart and we leave this world, we got a better place to go. That's the reason why Jesus told them over there in John 14. Uh, he was sitting there talking to the twelve. James is talking to the twelve the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. He's trying to he's trying to give them a message uh, over there. Jesus was sitting there talking to his twelve disciples, and, and he looked at them and everything. He said, "You boys believe in God." Uh, yeah. Well, if you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I'm going to prepare you boys, you boys, a place. And he said, and if I go, see, they didn't know at that time when Jesus was telling them that, they didn't know that he was headed to Calvary, amen. I, I, you know, they were just following along and everything and that, and of watching what was going on, seeing Jesus do the miracles, see him feed all of these people and uh, the multitudes that was following him. They were caught up in the hype of all of it at that time. And they did not have a deeper uh, knowledge of things. They didn't have it at that time. Why? Because they were, they were, they were following by sight. Amen. Following by sight. But when temptations come, and when the rubber met the road and Jesus is there in the hall of Pilate and, and they're, uh, they're, they're plucking his beard out and they're slapping him on the face and they've dressed him in a, in a robe and they've plaited a, a, a crown of thorns on his head and they're beating him with the reed. Peter's heading out there warming himself by a barrel and everything. And when they recognized Peter and said, well, you're one of his, uh, the Bible said that he began to curse and say, no, I don't know the man. No, I don't know the man. And the Bible says that when uh, Peter walked away, he said he heard the, 
rooster crowing. And the cock crowed three times. The Bible says that Peter went out and wept bitterly. Amen. Because he had denied the very one that he had followed ever since the first time he ever met him there at the Sea of Galilee. And Peter was a rough fisherman. Amen. And, and Jesus took him out and he said, Peter, cast your nets on the right side. And they brought, they brought in a great growth of fish. They filled three boats with fish. Amen. And Peter, be, Peter became a follower. But he was walking by sight. Even to the point where he got to the point when he, Jesus began to talk to him about his abortions, he's going to be, uh, the shepherd's going to be smitten and the, and the sheep is going to be scattered talking about them. Peter rose up and he said, Lord, I'll give my life for you and everything. And that's when God or Jesus looked at him. And he said, Peter, before this night's over, you'll deny me three times. But Peter wasn't having nothing to do with that. Amen. Till it happened. And when it happened, amen, Peter was in a trial. He's being tried. Now let me take you back over in the Old Testament. And talk to you just a moment about a gentleman that faith was tried like no, other, like no other man's faith has ever been tried down here in this world. The Bible says over there that God called Abraham, Genesis chapter 12. And Abraham began to follow God. And he told him, he said, Abraham, he said, I'm going to bless uh, the world through you. And I'm going to bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you. To make a long story short, uh, Abraham and, I, and uh, Sarai, Sarai uh, they, they began to follow God. And they went from being, I think he was 40 years old at the time when God called him. And just in about, just in a little while, they was all, uh, Abraham was already 100 and, and Sarah was like 90 something. And they were without children. And God blessed them with a child in their old age. And his name was Isaac. Amen. And do you think maybe that they loved him? Well, you know they loved him and everything. It was a miracle from God that they even had Isaac. Amen. But one morning, Abraham was out there probably looking at some of these sheep or tending the sheep or feeding the donkeys or something like that. There. And God spoke to him. He said, Abraham, he said, get thee into a mountain that I'll show thee. And he said, take thy son, thine only son, Notice what he said, take thy son, thine only son. See, Ishmael was still around at that time. Uh, the, the thought probably entertained in, in, in uh, Abraham's mind after, after the God told him what to do. He said, take thine son, thine only son, uh, to a mountain out here that I'm going to show you and sacrifice him to me. Can you imagine when he walked into the tent, he said, to Sarah at this time. Her name had been changed to Sarah. When he walked in there and he talked to Sarah and he said, uh, me and the lad's going on the mountain. We're going to go do sacrifice. Oh, what you sacrificing? I'm going to sacrifice Isaac. Can you imagine the conversation that night? No, you just can't imagine that. Can you imagine how their hearts were broken? Can you imagine that uh, and everything? But the Bible says in another place that Abraham staggered not at the promise of God. Amen. But Abraham went through a trial. And that trial that he went through, friend, amen, as they was going up the mountain, Isaac looked at him. He said, Father, here's the wood. You've got the fire. But where's the sacrifice? And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb. Amen. And I praise his wonderful name that Abraham met the challenge. Not only met the challenge, but I believe this, the knife was on its way to strike. To slit his throat and bleed him out. His own son there on the altar for God. An angel of the Lord spoke to Abraham and he said, Abraham, we know right now that your faith is real. We know why. Because you have not withheld 
thy son, thine only son, from me. And God provided a ram that was hung in the bushes. Amen. They did sacrifice and they come back off of the mountain. Amen. And who am I this morning to take my little light affliction and gripe about it? Who am I? You say, yeah, I've what if I've done a whole lot of things. And I'm trying my best to get by that. But indeed, the flesh is weak. The flesh is weak. But the one I served this morning, friend, Amen. Is able to try your faith and bring you all, bring you through whatever the trial is. One of these days, and present you before the Father, spotless, Amen. Without any trials, without any anything, not one blemish is going to be on you and I, friend, Amen. So we can count it joy this morning, Amen. It's joy to serve a living God. The Bible says, without chastisement, then you're bastards and not sons. And I believe with all of my heart, when God brings us through battles down here on this earth, that he, uh, uh, it's like taking, it's like taking a, a piece of, of metal. You can take a piece of, of, of metal that's soft. It don't have any temper in it. You say, how can you tell if it don't have any temper in it? Hold it up just between two of your fingers. And take that piece of metal and, and hit it with a hammer. If that, there ham, if that there piece of metal rings when you hit it with a hammer, it's, it's tempered metal. But if it's just got a kind of a dull thud to it when you hit it and just a clank, you know, there's no temper in that piece of metal. But when you take that piece of metal and you run it through the fire of God's judgments, amen, and the, and the fire brings you up to so hot. And he quenches you in the oil of the Spirit of God. Amen. Then when he holds you up before God. And he begins to peck on you and you'll, you'll ring. And you know what's going to ring out, friend? Praise his wonderful name. For the joy that was set before me. Amen. I'll endear whatever it is. Amen. Now there's a group of people. In the word of God, back in the days of old, they gave their life for the cause of Christ. Amen. They gave their own life. And there's a bunch in the book of Revelation that's going to come up out of great tribulation. And, and, and they're going to wash their robes and make them white in the blood of the Lamb, friend. This gospel that I'm preaching to you, this is what James is saying to the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. And I get to use it today, and I thank God. But then it says in verse 4, and I'll hush on it. It says that, uh, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. That's verse 3. But verse 4 it says, but let patience have her perfect work. Amen. In order to let patience have her perfect work. Amen. We must endure the hardness and the, and the afflictions and the things that comes to us down here in this world, we must endure that, amen, and do it without all kinds of foolishness coming out of our mouth and out of our mind. Let your faith increase. You say, how, how, how can I increase my faith? Get in a book. Let the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Uh, I want to talk to you just a second here, then I'll... I'll, I promise you I'll be done. There's different ways. And I thought about this. There's different ways. And I began to look at it and I found what it is. Uh, God will lead men into difficult ways. You know, into difficult, difficulties. God will lead, you know, he'll lead you into that. And he's looking at your faith to see how, how you're going to react to it. There's a piece of scripture here. Uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 2. It says, Thou shalt remember all of the way which the Lord thy God led thee those forty years, talking to the children of Israel, in the wilderness, to humble thee and to prove thee and to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or not. God will lead us into difficult ways, friend, along the way. Listen to what this in here says. 
God gives opportunity or choice. He gives us opportunities to make choices down here in this world. Amen. Uh, he'll sit before you. Joshua said over there to the children of Israel, he said, uh, I'm going to set before you the way of life or the way of death. He said, choose you this day which way you'll go. Now, you can imagine all of those that were over there with Joshua and everything, they said, well, we're going to choose life. Well, ain't nobody wants to die. Well, friend, if you choose life today, you'll choose the Lord Jesus Christ because in him is life. And there's no other way to get to heaven except by him uh, this morning. Amen. Uh, by prophesying, uh, 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 by pursuing, I'm sorry, by pursuing hard tasks. You know, God, God will try, you, try your faith by pursuing a hard task. How many of you here have ever took upon you something other that you was not real sure that you was able to do, but you went ahead and just jumped into it? Amen? And you know what you, know what you have to do when you do something other like that? You have to lean on God. And you'll find yourself praying, Lord, I can't get this done if you don't help me. And everything like that. So he's trying your faith. By leading you into a hard task. Something other that you really don't know. Uh, and then here's another one. By permitting men to suffer. You know, down here in this world. These people that have suffered for the cause of Christ. In this world. They give their life a ransom for Jesus. Amen. So there's a lot of methods that, that God deals with us in our time down here on this world, the trying of our faith. And when God tries our faith, amen, you can bet that you're going to come out on the other side a little stronger, a little stronger, a little stronger. And trials will come as long as you live down here in this world. Trials come to old people, young people. They do. If you're a child of God, you're going to... Now, he don't, he's not trying the lost people out here in this world. He's not, he's not trying them. They don't belong to him. Amen. But when they come to the faith, when they come to the knowledge of faith and accept Jesus Christ, then their trials will start. Amen. There was an old saying used back years ago, back in the 70s. I remember it. I still lost and undone, but I remember what was said. Uh, amen. And... Uh, they used to be an old saying there, everything. Boy, if you'll just get saved by the grace of God, everything will be a rose garden for you. Uh, that, uh, that is a lie from the depths of hell. I'll just tell you that right now. Amen. Yeah, uh, if you get saved by the grace of God, you've got that sweet assurance that one of these days you're going to heaven. Amen. But this life that we live down here, friend, is go you're going to be buffeted. You're going to go through trials and you're going to go through temptation. But he said... I will go with you all the way, even until the end. That's a message God's laid on her heart. Amen.